harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. Billy. What is it, John? Kelly Marie's here. I know, I saw her there just sitting to my left. How's Hello? it going? It's going so well. I'm so excited to be here. We've been trying to do this for a while now, Kelly Marie. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I no, I'm not saying it so that you apologize. <laughs> well, she's difficult to get hold of, very, isn't she? Very, very popular person. Uh, very <laughs> popular, both professionally and socially. Yes, pulled in a whole bunch of different directions. But we've probably been doing this podcast now for a couple of years. And I think within the first couple of months, I had said to you, hey, Kelly Marie, we'd love to have you on. And you were like, yeah. great, I'm working. And then another time, I'm working another time. But we got it. We're here. I'm and so I would excited. often say to him, when's Kelly Marie coming mm -hmm. on? Because you say that you're good friends. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem that you're good friends. We are good friends. Yes. Are you really? We are good friends. We, we Actually, the hat that Dom is wearing, I also own. Yeah. Ah, you we have matching it. hats. Yes. We are we good were, friends. We tell tell about me about the hat. <laughs> tell me. Well, the hat is, it's a, it's a J.J. Abrams original. So the working title for uh, the Star Wars film that I was in, uh, was Trixie because if you take off the first couple of letters and is it the last two letters, it becomes IX, which is the Roman numerals for nine, obviously. And we were episode nine. That's the one you were in. Rise of Skywalker. Pretty cool. Kelly Marie was in two. Is that right, Kelly Marie? You're in yes. Two. Yes. I was in episode eight as well. For people who are not big Star Wars fans, eight and nine were made by J.J. Abrams, right? Correct. And that was the last ones that were made. Wait, no, no wait. No, no. No. Kelly no. Marie's going to correct us oh, here. Hold on. <laughs> Seven and nine. Were Seven JJ. and nine were JJ. Episode eight was Ryan Johnson. Yeah. Who we also love and adore. Yeah. Okay. Love, love. Seven. Yeah. And then one, two, and three. One, two, and three, George it? Lucas. Yep. yep. Four, five, and six. Four, George, George Lucas. Lucas. Five. <laughs> Kazadoom? Someone Kazadoom? Kazadoom Jones. Hang on, Johnny's coming in. The well-known director. It is something like Erwin Kazadian. Kazadin? John is a The director of Empire Strikes Back. I'm truly embarrassed. And then you will know this. While we're preambling, who, who, while we're wasting time, who directed Return of the Jedi? No idea. Absolutely no clue. I don't know either. No clue. I don't know either. Well, that's uh, uh, Johnny, Irvin Kirshner. Kirshner. Irvin Kirshner directed uh, Empire Strikes Back and wow. Return of the Jedi. Johnny, he's doing R Richard Mark Line. Richard Mark, Mark Quinn. Well, there we go. Now <laughs> we've yeah, we done all Incredible. the movies. We knew that. Well, so tell tell me about that from the start. How how was how did that come about that you found yourself in the Star Wars uh, universe? It, yeah, it was a a miracle, I guess. <laughs> um, I was in LA working as an office assistant and auditioning for a bunch of stuff and not getting a lot of things, but getting close to certain things. Yeah. And when I say things, I mean like commercials right, yeah. <laughs> or like small parts on sitcoms that I was auditioning for. I would have to go in like twice for like a one line role. Like it was yeah, like, yeah. you know, I was, I, I very much felt like I was starting out, but at the same time, it took me years to get to the point where I was just auditioning. I'm sure you both know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I was sort of just auditioning. I was doing improv with friends at night and like getting into sketch comedy. I was doing some sketches with College Humor at the time. Um, and then I started auditioning for what was being referred to as this untitled Ryan Johnson project, um, which then became episode eight uh and I, I i thought it was like kind of a joke the whole time I, I remember being like oh this is hilarious like i'll tell my grandkids one day that i auditioned for this thing mm -hmm. that i'm absolutely never gonna get like it's just insane mm -hmm. um but i was wrong but did you know it was star wars <laughs> when it was called the untitled so it was supposed to be this huge secret but it was pretty easy to like google what ryan johnson was working uh, on at the time right um yeah so i figured it out uh but there was not really any sort of information available in terms of like what the movie was about, what the character was yeah. like. Everything was so vague. Um, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing as an actor, right? That if you have one audition and you don't get it, you're kind of like used to that. And you're like, okay, yeah. cool. That's just a, another week. But if you have four or five auditions for the same thing and you start to get invested, it's so much harder to forget that, you know, because yeah. you've gone down. The, I don't know about you, but like if I get to that point, I'm starting to think about... How would they walk? How would they take their tea? How would they 
how would they be in the morning? What are they like when they're drinking? What are they, how are they to their mum and dad and stuff? And then you have to just forget all that if you don't get the part. Yeah, yeah. it's so... I feel like acting is so unhealthy for that reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Like, it's just... You have no control over your life and you have to sort of... At least for me, I feel like it's been this journey of of really trying to protect my creativity and protect the love that I have for the actual act of it. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it's just too hard yeah. and it's too scary and it's too uncertain. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear what it's been like for both of you, like how you're... Uh, no, I totally agree. I, it makes me think of that thing that Brian Cranston said. Did you see that? Where he's talking about it and he says where it changed in his mind. He said something like, I used to go to auditions saying pick me for this, you know, mm. I, w I want to get this. And then he changed that to, this is what I can offer you. This mm. is, mm. you gave me these lines, I I could do this. Yeah, and it will be good. And there, there's what I'm offering. And, and it's, that's up it's, to you. It doesn't matter to me whether you say yes or no. This is what I think from those words, this is, here's an option. Oh, great. And yeah. I thought, that's brilliant. Rather yeah. than, because if you go in with the, I want this job, you end up not really making a decision on yeah. how you're playing the character. You're too busy thinking, what do they want? Mm. What, what would they like? Mm. Whereas if you go in saying, this is what I'm doing, if you think that's what you want, then that's great. Yeah, if you yeah. don't, then that's, yeah. that's great as well. Maybe, you, maybe you want someone that's yeah. six foot you want two. Something else. There's nothing that I can do about the fact yeah. that I'm five foot seven and you want someone that's six foot two. That's a really yeah. healthy way to approach it, I think. And Billy and I laugh about this thing all the time, which is, which is such an interesting like, examination of actors. A lot of the time, you get a job, you get your script, you get your schedule, and the first thing that you look at in your schedule is, when's my first day off? <laughs> like, we spend our entire so life true. like breaking ourselves to get a job, and then yeah. you're like, oh, cool, I'm off on Tuesday, that's fantastic. <laughs> so so I've, I've, I've started to really kind of try and change that narrative for me, which is I always wanted to be an actor when I was a kid, Mm. I've, I've, I've managed to carve out a career as an actor and if I'm lucky enough to be going to work it's my favourite day otherwise you waste months of your life going oh I can't wait to finish so that I can go on holiday and then you go on holiday and you're like oh I'd really like to be working like you need yeah. to be in that place yeah, enjoying it you know yeah. actors are big complainers right a group yeah. of actors is called a complaint of actors <laughs> And uh, we go off on tangents, you'll notice yeah. here. So in case we do go off on tangents, I just want to say I absolutely loved your character in those movies. It was, it, and I mean this totally truthfully, it's w when you see someone in, in a movie and you're just always wanting the camera to go back to them, mm. that's how I felt about your character. And I think that might be because you were doing improv and all that. Just you talking there, yeah. you had that, immediacy to your your character that i was like oh it's exciting every time we go there and that that's a brilliant thing to see on yeah. screen i think she's adorable rose she's yeah adorable. wonderful really character nice. and you brought so so much to life well there's a lot of there's a lot of characters in the star wars universe that are kind of capable that maybe they're on the dark side or the light side but they can handle it you know like han solo can handle it luke skywalker can handle it chewbacca there's not you know darth vader's kind of tough they're all like they're on either sides of the angle, but they're all mm. like, I'm here, I can shoot a weapon, I can get into a fight, I'm fine. And what I loved about what you found with Rose is there's a humanity to her, there's a vulnerability. You're like, oh God, I, I really hope that she's okay. You know, like you, you can see that, that kind of trepidation in your character, you know? And what's going to vulnerability. happen? Vulnerability. Vulnerability and a danger as well that anything could happen. And that's always kind of, you know, in any acting, that's a, a, a brilliant thing. Your business can't keep waiting for the dream hire to sweep you off your feet. How do you find them right now? You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. You can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments and virtual interviews. You hate waiting? 
Indeed US data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Mm, it can be very intimidating, Millie. You're looking for someone, you've got all these websites mm. open, it's confusing, yes. you don't know where to go. Indeed puts it all in one place. It saves you time. You can message, schedule, and interview top talent all in one spot. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Now, Indeed knows that when you're growing your business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why when you sponsor a job, you only pay for quality applications from resumes in their database matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash onion to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash onion. Indeed.com slash onion. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Can we talk about notifications for a second? Mm. Now, does anybody ever leave those sounds on anymore? No. Well, except that kind. Oh, yeah. That's another sale on Shopify. The all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for ghee, start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll create an online store in your vibe, discover new customers and grow the followers that keep them coming back. Shopify has all the sales channels sorted so your businesses keep growing from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform. Even across social media platforms like TikTok, you love TikTok, Mm -hmm. Facebook, and Instagram. And thanks to the 24-7 support and free libraries full of educational content, Shopify's got you every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify, and you will too. It's fantastic, Shopify. Mm -hmm. As you know, my wife uses it for her business. Yeah, T-shirts. Setting it up, easy, easy. It looks brilliant, works great. Shopify makes selling simple so you can put yourself and your ideas out there. Whether your thing is making e-books or earrings, Shopify makes your success possible. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash onion, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash onion to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash onion. Now, what about, we do go off on tangents, but let's go back a little bit. <laughs> right. What, what about the day when after all these auditions, your agent calls you and say, you got it. What happened that day? Do you remember? Yeah, because I was at work. Um, <laughs> I was at my office job. So the way it worked was I got a call from my agent saying that Ryan Rom, so the writer, director, and producer wanted to talk to me. And in my mind, I was like, great. It's going to be like one of those pats on the back, like, great job, kid. Maybe yeah. next time. Yeah. Um, but they wanted to see me like in person. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go during my lunch break from my office job. And I went to this casting office um, and I sat there. I remember sitting, I remember they had all of these coffee book, like coffee table books on the table. I never read those, but of course that day I was like, I'm so busy. I'm so casually looking at this book. Like I don't care about anything that's about to happen to me. Um, and I remember Ryan walking in and being like, oh, Kelly, hi. And I was like, oh, 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 oh I'm just <laughs> reading this. Hello. Give me a moment, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then we went into the casting room and he basically, there was like a little back and forth of talking because we hadn't talked and I think there was like a month in between every audition because they were looking for people everywhere um and then he said that he wanted to offer me the role and I remember okay this is the moment I feel like I remember as a child like you dream about what it would be when Mm -hmm. you when you were to receive the thing that you think is going to complete your life and I remember thinking like oh there's going to be like celebration and screaming and like just like euphoria and I remember my first feeling just being like straight out fear like Mm. I was so terrified and I didn't respond for a very long time like I just sat there like frozen and then I just remember there was silence for maybe what felt like an eternity was probably like a minute and he goes so do you want this? (laughs) (laughs) And I remember being like, yeah, but I have no idea what I'm doing. And that sort of feeling that you were talking about, Dom, and and Billy, too, like about Rose and about like the idea that she was working like in this world from a place of like, I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing is very um, metaphorical to like the experience I was having because I very much did not come from 
the world of entertainment at all. And yeah. it just was all so new to me. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's, it's a big galaxy, the Star Wars galaxy. And I think it's important sometimes to have characters that feel a little overwhelmed by where they are in that galaxy. And that's what happens, I think, with Rose is she becomes, in a lot of ways, the audience. Because they think, that's what I would be. I would be in that world with explosions and spaceships yeah. and stormtroopers and be like, oh, okay, I'm all right, I'm all right. And that's you captured <laughs> yeah. that really beautifully. Well, um, thanks for saying that. I actually want to talk about Lord of the Rings. Well, we can definitely talk about Can we about talk Lord about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to, well, we'll go backwards and forwards because I want to keep talking about Star Wars. But okay, let's, let's what, go what, backwards and forwards. Okay, let's what, do whatever, however what, you want to. What do you want to ask about Lord of the Rings? I want to ask everything I want. Well, you're going to New Zealand, right? (laughs) You just told us. Yes. Um, That's brilliant. And as a a straight up kind of Lord of the Rings fan, it's pretty thrilling to go to that country. I am very excited. Yes. Do you think you might have any time off, long weekends or anything like that? I honestly have no idea what my schedule is going to be like, but... I'm there for so long that I'm hoping that I will have some. I'm sure I'll have weekends. Oh, yeah. To, like, go yeah, explore. you're fainting. I'll go to Hobbiton. I'm going to go to all the places. Oh, you got to go. So, you're, but we're not allowed to say what it is that you're mm. doing in New Zealand, but you are going to be there for quite a long time. Five months, yeah. And you're going to be in Auckland. Yes. Based in Auckland, which is a great city. Fantastic city. But, and, and you're quite close to Hobbiton then. Not too yeah. far. Yeah, just head south. <laughs> But don't go too far south or you'll end up in the water and then you'll yeah, be in the, point. the South <laughs> Island. It, but if, you will love it. It's such a great country. You, you can actually buy maps. This is very kind of deep, uh, geeky culture, but I'm, I'm cool with it. You can buy maps <laughs> of New Zealand, but they replace the modern day cities and what they do is they show you where the entire production was filmed around the country that is so cool so based on you know where you are you can be like oh well i'm kind of close to here this weekend so i could go over here i think we always say in, at, at these kind of conventions that billy and i've been lucky to do and people say i'm going to new zealand for the first time what should i absolutely do we always kind of say try and get yourself to queenstown don't we queenstown yeah i mean we filmed a lot around there End of the first movie and all that when Sean Bean tragically dies. Spoiler, Don't worry, that's a spoiler. spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> 20, 20 year spoiler Trying alert, to yeah. save us. Mm-hmm. You know? um, but we did all that stuff down, and it's beautiful. It's all mm-hmm. mountains and we learned how to uh, snowboard down there. Wow. Mm-hmm. Not, not Orlando Bloom, of course. He was getting helicoptered to the tops of mountains and <laughs> coming down kind of off piste, I think they call it. I dog. think that's what he called it, off piste. Whereas yeah. me, Dom and Elijah uh, were having our first lessons. And to go off uh, off a little bit here. <laughs> to go off piste. <laughs> off piste a little bit. What the, one of the times I laugh most in my life is, have you ever been skiing and snowboarding and all that? I have not. Oh, right. Never well, it's very, very embarrassing if, <laughs> if, you, if you get a little older and you haven't done it. Yeah. And we were all, you know, 30, 20s kind of thing and taking our first lessons. And the, the, the little lift, the little lift thing that takes you up to the smallest slope, you stick a thing between your legs that's always moving up uh-huh. and then it kind of drags you up the hill. You know, but it's quite hard to get on. It's very hard. That sounds terrifying. Yeah, it's it really it's difficult. Hard. So Elijah, God bless him, tried about <laughs> three or four times and couldn't get on this lift. He kept falling off. And the last time he fell off, he just held on to the thing <laughs> and got dragged up on his back That's all so the way good. up. Oh, my so God. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> so good. I couldn't stop, man. Yeah. So definitely go to Queenstown and do that. Queenstown's great because we, there's, a, there's a lot that goes on that you see in that film. Like Billy said, obviously, Mary and Pippin, uh, the whole fellowship breaking up is Queenstown. So you've got... Aragorn fighting Lurch, the the scary Urukai. You've got Frodo and Sam jumping in the boat. You've got Oz rowing the boats. You've got yeah, Whoa, Bar- so yeah cool. you've got Boromir <laughs> trying to take the ring from uh, Frodo yeah, on that hill. Yeah, you've got the big Urukai fight. There's Ooh. a lot that goes on there, and, you, and wow. it's, it's a place called Paradise. My only my only kind of warning with Paradise, which we we got told about on the call sheet, is they have these little sand flies which oh. are barely noticeable, tiny black little flies yeah. that just ruin your skin, don't they? No. Oh, really itchy oh, I'm, I'm so jealous you're going down there. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be are great. you ready for the adventure? 
I'm ready. I'm terrified, but ready. Um, yeah, I leave on Sunday. Wow. So fun. Yeah. Very cool. God, such a great definitely go to Wellington as well. Mm. Yeah. You um I know you're sort of east side here. Yeah. And and Wellington's kind of east side. It's all Oh, good to know. Art and yeah. and, and um uh like I'll tell the all the coffee shops have like local artists paintings in wow. and stuff. And one day I'm walking along the street and it said King Lear. And it gave an address, and it wasn't a theater; it was someone's apartment. <gasps> That's and amazing. And I went up to the apartment. Was it King Lear or Othello? No, it was King. Yeah, I think it King was, Lear. I think it was Lear. Yeah, King Lear. I think. And uh, all the ta- all the chairs were round this house, and I sat and I watched this. Wow! And it was directed and starred Taika. What? Yeah, Watiti. Totally forgot about it what? until about a year ago, and he said to me. You saw my uh, King Lear in my apartment. <laughs> what like, the that's hell? Like, oh, that's, only, that's what Wellington is like. Wow. Only in New Zealand, that type of stuff. That's beautiful. Isn't it yeah. brilliant? That's incredible. Yeah, I'll send you some info about Wellington, especially because we were based in Wellington and, you know, like, you got to go to probably Motel, right? And oh, Chow. And, they're probably all closed now, don't I think Motel and Chow are still around. Oh, um, we're, we're going to give you a list oh of things. Oh, my God, give me all the things. Oh, it's great. Uh, back to Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can't, we're going there's back around, another yeah. adventure. So that was filmed in London, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. We, uh, Pinewood. One? Pinewood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had you ever been to England before? I had been to England, but very briefly. And, it, like, I... um. I went on a summer abroad, like in college, and I, I went to um, Brighton, which is in oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. nice little seaside town. Yeah, yeah, that's where I was studying for a summer, so nice. I'd been to, I'd been to England before. So all of a sudden, then you're going to Pinewood Studios, super famous studio, and uh, how long after having the meeting with the director did that happen? Very soon. So it was just like, yeah. we want you to do this. Yeah. So We're actually, leaving. my friends that I brought, Caitlin, who you met. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. I was wave there, lovely. living with at the time, and I had to essentially move out of my apartment. I was also told that I could not tell anybody, like mm-hmm. a single soul. I couldn't tell my parents. I couldn't tell anyone. Oh. Um, Did you so, tell Caitlin? No, I had to lie to her. No. So, yeah. So I. I <laughs> so she watched me move out of our apartment. Which, by the way, had Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter posters all over the apartment. Love it. Nice. There's actually, um, we still have the Lord of the Rings posters. There's three of them. The three of us. What, the three movie posters? The three movie posters. So Janzy, who's here, and Caitlin. I lived with Janzy for a couple years, and then I lived with Caitlin, and those posters were always around, and now we have this thing where it's like they're kind of always rotating around between us. That's brilliant. That's Um, cool. But yeah, so at the time I was living with Caitlin and I moved out of that apartment and moved to, and it was, it was very soon after we had that conversation. I had to give my two weeks notice for my office job. I was very adamant about that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then, and then yeah. you just said to Caitlin, I'm moving out. I said, I'm moving I, to, I lied. I'm moving to Europe. And I said, I'm moving. Well, I should have said that. I said, I'm moving to Canada for a small indie movie that I can't talk about you, right now. You lied about the country. Why oh, couldn't you just lied. say Why England? Why couldn't you just say England? England? You know when people are bad at lying so they oh. overcompensate? Yeah. That was definitely. Definitely me. I'm going to the moon yes. to do yeah, yeah, a yeah. sci fi. <laughs> don't ask about it. Just don't <laughs> ask about it. It's important. Someone. I May can't the force just... be with you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, don't forget that. Don't forget that. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. So, sometimes life can get complicated. Mm-hmm. You know that. Oh, I- I mean, it'd be good if there was some sort of, you know, a user's manual mm. that you could flick through the pages and think, oh, I'm feeling a bit down today. Mm. What, what, what am I supposed to do about that? I didn't sleep well last night. Mm-hmm. I'm worried about this new job. Mm. But it doesn't. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. Mm. So when it's not working for you, it's normal that you feel stuck. Mm. And it's nice sometimes to have someone to talk to. Of course, friends and family can do that for you. Yes, you're fantastic for that. But every so often, you might need a professional. Whether you're dealing with a trauma or maybe you need a little bit of a conversation with someone about some self-empowerment or maybe some coping skills, you need better help. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists, available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Mm -hmm. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash onion. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash onion. Star Wars is a very overwhelming experience. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it was the, it was the most overwhelming experience. Really? Oh, for sure. Remember, I, I, do you remember I had that horrible day on set? Remember yeah. we talked about it? Yeah. The only yeah. horrible, truly horrible day I've ever had on set was unfortunately on Star Wars. And I spent more time with Kelly Marie and Billy than <laughs> anyone else on the set. But on this particular day, which was my first day, oh, I was God. doing a scene with John, Daisy, Anthony Daniels, Jonas, R two D two, and it's a, it's a. Tr <laughs> were you in that scene? I think maybe. So I feel like I was always around. So around when you were I think around. you were around pressing buttons and yeah. bleeps and blows. <laughs> yeah, and stuff. exactly. And there's a camera on a crane, two like a hundred feet away, something like that. And I've got this monologue, and JJ just said, obviously, just wait for the camera to rest. It's going to go. It's going to wipe past a couple of creatures and aliens and droids, and then it's going to settle in between C-3PO and, and Chewbacca's shoulders, and then you're going to start. And I was like, right, okay. <laughs> I've told you this line, right? Yeah. Oh. It didn't make it into the film. JJ, JJ emailed me a few months later, and he said, we're, we're not using that scene. We're, we're going to have Daisy do the thing instead. And I was like, thank God, because that was my least favorite day on set. But I had to say, and it's weird, because I can remember it now, and I couldn't remember it on the day. You can't get to... You can't get to Exegol. You need a super luminite lodestone star compass attuned to hyperspace vectors. Oh my God. And I could not say I mean... it. So the camera's coming from like, you know, 60 feet, 50 feet, 40 feet, 30 feet, and it's resting. And I'm like, okay, got it, got it. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, I got the line. And I go, you can't get to Exegol. Yes, X-ray with this, and JJ would be like, "No, reset." And the reset Ooh, would take like reset. four or five minutes, yeah, because it's droids going backwards yeah. and creatures going backwards. <laughs> and we did this like three or four times. It's fine. I'm starting to this horrible moment sweat, is like to yeah. start to feel this yeah. little beads of sweat going down your head. Oscar, uh, Oscar's in the scene. With me, lovely, lovely Oscar. Mm. Oscar put his arm around me. He's like, "Hey, it's fine. Oh, Don't worry about it." Because Oscar's been doing it for really years on the yeah. Star Wars set. He knows. Oh that you're having a bit of a moment. He's like, it's fine. We'll do it. We'll get it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll get it. Tried it again, didn't get it. And then this awful moment where JJ, who I've known for 20 years, came over to me and he went, J I can always tell when JJ's getting a little, you know, irked. And JJ came over and he went, it's, it is fine. It's fine. You do need to get it now. And oh I, my God. And I, and I was like, I, yeah, I will. I will. I, I'll get it. But JJ's basically just saying, you know, this is a huge money set. And if you don't get this in the next 15 to 20 minutes, we have to move on because we've got an afternoon of scenes to do and it's costing us hundreds of thousands of dollars. So he came over and just kind of went, fine. Do, you, you do need to get it. And I was like, okay, I'll get it. I'll get it. Sweat rolling down my back. Was that just guys like taking off their Wookiee heads oh, and stuff? Was... This fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a day like that. Terrifying. On set. Terrifying. And then it was done and we, did, and we did the scene and I got through it, but I was not happy about what, what I did necessarily. And I went over to Daisy and John and Oscar and I was like, oh God, I'm sorry guys, that was like an awful day for me. And they were like, meh, it's fine. And I went over to JJ and I said the same thing. I was like, my bad man, you know, I, I think it took eight or nine takes instead of two or three. And JJ was like, it's fine, it's great. We'll, we'll figure it out. You know, if there's a moment where it doesn't look great, we've got a shot of Daisy and John and Oscar yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly Marie over there and all these people. Ooh. I was like, okay. And then months later he called me and he went, we've actually given that narrative piece, the, the super luminite lodestone star compass piece to Daisy. And I was like, thank God, because I would have been mortified watching you. That's a lot of words. Uh, yeah, that's and it is like, words. and I was jet lagged it's and it's scary. Star Wars. It's scary. Yeah, there is something, something so overwhelming about being in that space and seeing these characters that people have, loved for so long yeah. there's just something yeah. terrifying that we've all it. loved you yeah know? were yeah, you a yeah, fan yeah. before you i'm gonna be honest i was not i did yeah. not grow up on star wars i grew up on had you seen it lord, lord of the rings, of the rings. <laughs> so wait had you, had you had you seen star wars Kelly? um no wow yeah 
Wow. So it probably didn't have that same. Which heavy... actually helped me in the auditions that yeah. I didn't have this right, sort of like yeah. reverence for yeah. it. And I think it actually helped me to create a character that didn't. For me, like, I felt like I was totally clean slating it. It yeah. was like I wasn't trying to be like anyone yeah. else, Absolutely. which helped. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. Sli- slightly out of the normal kind of ideas of the tropey yeah. characters in Star Wars. Yeah. You're in your own lane for sure. Yeah. I was doing a Chekhov play once, and there was a young actor. Was it the seagull, it. darling? No, it wasn't, darling. It was... Um, it was the cherry, the cherry orchard. Or cherry. Oh, lovely. Right on the nose. <laughs> and yeah. There's a young actor in it. And he, he said to the director, I've never seen any Chekhov. I better go and watch something. And the director said, no, don't. Because then you'll bring something mm. new. To, if you watch, then you're just doing the cherry orchard. Then you yeah. do the one that you've seen before. So yeah. I, think that, I think that's really yeah. important. Quite f- smart of the director. My favorite day on set, since we're talking about the worst one, and it'd be nice to have one that, that was great, <laughs> right, cool. which, I, which I shared with you, Kelly Marie, mm-hmm. and Billy, and mm-hmm. a few other people was, do you remember when on that massive set that was kind of the invasion at Insane. the end, and yeah. they, they did a huge reset because you had stormtroopers on wires and explosions oh, yeah, going on. I remember on. that. Yeah, yeah, so that that moment, the reset on that was probably half an hour, <laughs> and JJ's on the mic like this. And he said, guys, it's going to be half an hour, but we'd really prefer it if you stayed on set because uh-huh. if you leave, it's going to take us an hour to get everyone yeah. back and you're going to go eat and you're going to go do this thing. So we're like, yeah, we'll stay. They played Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys and we all had a dance party <laughs> for half an hour, didn't we? It was we? really fun. Stormtroopers yeah, and, and the Resistance yeah. all dancing. So good. Did you have fun in London? I really did. I love London. I'm a big theater fan. So ah. um, being able to just like, live in London and go see theater like you're going to see a movie. Like I would just go by myself and be like, one ticket, please. And I just saw so many shows. Um, That's great. So yeah, big, big. Where were you based? Where did they put you? Um, what part of town? I was li- I, I, I kind of moved around to a bunch of different places, um, but I really like the east side of, of London. So I was in Dalston for part of it. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we stayed in the Langham for a while, didn't we? Yeah, we were there for a really long time. I like that hotel a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then just going in and watching theater. Brilliant. Yeah. Anything stick in your mind, theater-wise, that you saw? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know what I saw that's actually coming to L.A.? It's coming to the Geffen, but I saw The Inheritance when it was in oh, did you? London. Yeah, and it blew my mind. Oh, great. We'll go see it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's coming to the Geffen, it. like, really soon. Um, Since, let's go back. Let's go back to a Lord of the Rings right, thing. Right, Think, since you grew up, quote-unquote, <laughs> on, on, on Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yes. When, how old were you when that first film came out? Do you know? Did the first movie come out in 2001? 2001? Yeah, I was in sixth grade. So how old is sixth grade? I don't do grades. 11, 12. Did you go see it at the cinema? Yeah. With your family, with your friends? Oh, my fa- my parents love my parents. They're just not into... Movies. They hate Star Wars. They hate sci-fi. They hate fantasy. They just... So I went with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> they hate it all, yeah. And how, how come you as an 11-year-old knew about Lord of the Rings? Had you read the book? Did you read it at school? I read The Hobbit. I had a seventh grade teacher. Um, actually... I don't remember what I had a teacher who was like obsessed with J.R.R. Tolkien and just like had us now that I look back I'm like was he able to just create his own curriculum because I think he did Mm -hmm. we read The Hobbit and we like had to make our own board games of like The Hobbit it was incredible it was great um Hi, Mr. Farr, if you're listening. Hi, Mr. Farr. Hi, Mr. Farr. <laughs> yeah. We had Stephen Colbert on our show who we, I don't think either one of us were aware of how much of a, of a Tolkien fan he is, especially of the books. I mean, he he's, yeah. has high reverence for the books. Yeah. Stephen subscribes to a podcast in which every week they read one single sentence from Lord of the Rings <laughs> and then they break it down over the course of an hour. I was like, how long is that That's podcast going to go on? insane. Yeah, he's He reads obsessed. some of the book every day. Every day. He yeah. goes back and really? reads some of he's it. He's a yeah. nice guy. Oh, he's isn't lovely. He? He's so yeah. lovely. He's my favorite. I like yeah. him more than Dom, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I like Dom quite a lot. No, he does. He's a very lovely, <laughs> wholesome it. man, yeah. Stephen Colbert. He's a nice guy. Smart. So so tell us about that. Funny. He's funny. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> tell us about that. that cinema experience did had you read rev- reviews or previews did no, you go in kind of blind i didn't even know that reviews were a thing until i started working in entertainment like i really until never you read, were getting them really yeah and then i was like oh i should <laughs> be aware of what people are writing about me no yeah i um went in fully blind and i became very obsessed very quickly like i i think it was you know i grew up on disney movies and sort of like had a love for i feel like animated disney movies are full of magic and like some sort of 
um, pixie dust. Yeah, pixie dust. Mm-hmm. Um, but Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter were like two of the very big, very big life changing things in in my in my childhood. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's very cool to be here. With did you, you Did you have a favorite Hobbit? Billy, <laughs> what? What are you doing? I'm just asking questions. That's what you're doing, podcast. But we've we've been friends for a long time. Do you know what I mean? I know. It's, it's, but <laughs> I I would guess from her email, which we won't say what it is. It's, I would guess it's maybe not one of yeah, us. I would think it's Sean Astin. <laughs> Sean Astin is an extremely uh, popular um, man. Hobbit. Well, man and Hobbit. We. I'm obsessed with the Beatles. Both Billy and I are obsessed with the Beatles. Mm. On these conventions that we've been doing, we've been doing little homages to Beatles albums. And I very quickly selected Sean to be Ringo because Ringo was the most popular Beatle in the United States. He got more fan mail, more liked than anyone else, more adorable. Because at these conventions, Sean always has the longest line and he's the most popular, I think. He's well loved. Yeah, you know. because that's Sam, Sam Wise. Sam is so wholesome. He's so Sam nice. Wise mm. Whole, very wholesome. He doesn't do as much for the fellowship as Pippin does, but well, you know, I would he's say hard work. <laughs> he's a hard worker. I don't know if you remember the movies, but Mary yeah. Mary stabs the Witch King, which is but, a, the real <laughs> warrior <laughs> Hobbit moment. But not to death. You just to knock be about with Gandalf for a trilogy. You just That's it, you yeah. stab him in the, the knee, I think. Yeah, I give him him right in the knee so that he so that he drops to the level for Eowyn to stab. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been able to reach his head. Meanwhile, you're just that kind of knobhead friend that hangs out with a wizard that is like, oh, get away. And smokes pipe weed. Smokes a lot of pipe weed. But shouldn't you have (laughs) stabbed them maybe in the liver or something? I don't think he could reach. Maybe if I jumped. Yeah, okay. Someone had mentioned this thing the other day about the idea that if if Frodo were to attach the ring, maybe tie it in in a lovely kind of ribbon, around a mouse and then keep the mouse in his pocket, surely the mouse would take on board all of the heavy wow. pain of the ring. And <laughs> him and Sam could just stroll along for a couple of years and just drop the mouse in. And I was like, that is profound. Because when Sam picks up Frodo, yeah. he doesn't take he on doesn't take that, right. does he? So, Mr. Trick there, Mr. But wouldn't you Tolkien? end up with like a golem m- mouse? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Eating fish and all that. Yeah. You wouldn't want to see that, would you? No, you would definitely wouldn't want to see that. And then you'd need to drop <laughs> a mouse into a volcano. Yeah. Which is bad luck in a lot of countries. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. 10 years bad luck. Peeling the onion. Um, Well, what else? We've got some questions here, which we could all do. Should we we jump into a question? We could do a riddle. Let's do one riddle. Are you good at riddles? Terrible. It's riddles in the dark. Riddles in the dark. Very exciting. All right, well, let's try one. uh, Uh, Do we know the answer? Oh, no, no, well, fun. John will know the answers, I'm, right? I'm very much in the mood for a, a, a riddle now. So oh, let's do a riddle. Give us one. Let's Here we go. One. Right, I'll read it out. Here's a riddle from oh, Marie. I think you're going to get this. From <laughs> Adam... Just clear your mind. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm meditating right now. This is from Adam C. in St. Louis. Is it St. Louis or St. Louis? Well, it depends if you're singing it or saying it. Oh. Well, what would you say, Kelly Marie? I would... Meet me in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. St. Louis. Right. Um, so if you're saying, I think you're right. I think if you say, I don't know. <laughs> me, me and Saint Louis, Louis. Oh, I know Louis, that is then. a song. But Louis, I think you say Saint Louis, say John. Louis. What would John say? Would you say Saint Louis or Saint Louis, John? Is this the riddle? <laughs> what is that? I keep forgetting. I have to press a button today. Yeah, John. Uh, once I came out here, I started saying Saint Louis more. But when Saint I was Louis. in Chicago, I'd say Saint Louis all the time. So, say you lived in Saint Louis, what would you say? My friend, one of my best friends is from St. Louis, and I think he does say St. Louis. Right, well, we'll go, go with that, St. Louis. And if, uh, see, see uh, my hand was the United States of America there, Kelly Marie. Oh, this being um, California, mm-hmm. uh-huh. New York, got mm-hmm. it. and Florida. Got it. Where is St. Louis, St. Louis? Well, she's it's, good in the geography. It's there. Right there, right in the very right middle the there. Center. Is that right, John? She's bang on. She's right, absolutely right bang, on. bang on. I did win the geography bee in third grade. Oh, good for you. Brag, did but... you really? Yeah, I did. Did you win the spelling bee as well? <laughs> no, I didn't. What was it? A geography quiz like capital cities and stuff like that? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Dom knows all the capital cities of all this world. Do you? No, but I am pretty good on capital cities. I'm animals. I'm good. Capital cities. I'm not that great. Jakarta. <laughs> Come back to you on that one. Okay. Wait, here's a little tip, Kelly Marie. This is actually kind of a Scottish tip, but I'm going to do it on behalf of Billy. Thank you, Tom. 
if you, because, you know, maybe you will be in Britain sometime soon. If you do manage to get yourself to Scotland, mm. it's important to pronounce this city Edinburgh and not, as a lot of people in the United States say, which is Edinburgh. That will make you stand out as if not knowing what you're talking about. It's Edinburgh. 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 There you go. Nailed Brilliant. it. Wow. Middlesbrough. Peterborough. It, as soon as an American person says borrow, everyone's like, you don't Edinburgh. know what you're talking about. All right, we're moving on. You can take that in New Zealand as well. I don't know if it's any use down there, but it might be. I'll just keep saying it in New Zealand and see if uh, I get it. Lots of Scots people. Are um, there actually? Lots of Scottish people emigrated to New Zealand. There's a great city right down the bottom of New Zealand called, help me, Don. Well, is it Christchurch? No, No. it's further south and it has a castle. It's the only city with a castle. Dunedin. Dunedin. Well done, Dom. Tremendous knowledge. Oh, good on cities. Dunedin. Dunedin 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 is is like a little Scotland. All the cities are Scottish names from Edinburgh. Mm. And uh, it's got a castle. It was a Scottish guy who went there. And uh, you should go there as well. It's a brilliant It is like a mini Scotland. Rains a lot. Everyone's miserable. That's something else. That's something else. You you can fly down there in a weekend from uh, Oh, is it Is it a very large place? No, it's a small country. It's long, though. It's It's long. long. Okay. From north to south. If you're driving, because the roads, you know, they keep the countryside pretty um, legit, the drive from the top of the South Island to the bottom is a good day, right? Or two. But you can fly down there in an hour. I'm oh. so excited for you. Oh, I wish I was going. That's so exciting. I'm hey, excited. guys, should we get to this riddle? For yeah, let's, let's do it. Right. Let's do it. Let's do it. it. Right, we've got two riddles here, but I'll, I'll do the first one from Adam C. in St. Louis. It goes like this. With thieves I consort, with the vilest in short, I am quite at my ease in depravity, yet all divines use me, and servants cannot lose me, for I am the center of gravity. What am I? My God. Jeez, Dominic, if what? you do That's mind, heavy, that. could you give us that again? All right, we'll, we'll slow it down a little bit. With thieves I consort. With the vilest in short. The vilest. Oh, I am quite at my ease in depravity. Oh, God. Yet all divines use me. Divines. Gods and stuff. Right. And savants cannot lose me. For I am the center of gravity. What am I? Well, the se- what is it? Let's start from the end, Tom. Lovely. Yeah, start, yeah. From, start from the back the and go towards the beginning. Of gravity. The center of gravity is. What is the center of gravity? Wait. The sun is the center of gravity. Wait, I've got it. I've got it. Am I cra- what is it? I've got it. What is it? What is the center of gravity? What is uh... It's the letter V. So read the rest of it. Wait, no. It is? Go, with thieves. With thieves, I consort. There's a V yeah, in thieves. V in there. With the vilest, in short, starts wow. with a V. Oh. I am quite at ease in depravity, has a oh, V in yeah. it. Oh my God. Yet all divines use me, and servants cannot lose me, for I am the center of gravity. Wow. Johnny! Wow. I've got it! That was the fastest I've ever that seen. That was incredible! Unbelievable! A real answer to my life. Hey! Wow! Wow! I can't, I, 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 we figured that out. Amazing. John. I'm fully impressed right I now. I am very impressed because he's normally a, a dumb stupid. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing, yeah. Wow. Thanks, yeah. Well, do you want to read out a question and then we'll jump into some tasty business? What, oh, yeah. What, would what be, question would we have? I don't know. We've got one about nicknames. Do you and your pals have nicknames for each other, Kelly Marie? Uh, I don't think so. We could talk about the fact that I walked around calling you Kelly Ann for a week. <laughs> should tell yeah, that we story. Should. <laughs> so on set, right? for like the first week or so, I just thought Kelly Ann Tran. It just rolls off the yeah, tongue. That is quite good. And it's I was like, nice. Kelly Ann Tran. She's an actress. Kelly Ann Tran. I was like, oh yeah, it's kind of a cool, funky name. So for the first week. You know, like I said, spent a lot of time with Kelly Marie and Billy. Just chatting, chatting, chatting on set. All right, see you later, Kellyanne. See you later, Kellyanne. I'm going to get a cup of tea, Kellyanne. And then I came on set, and at one point, both JJ and all the other cast kept mentioning Kellyanne's name and then looking at me. So they'd be like, are you good there, Kellyanne? And look at me. And I was like, what? What have I done? What's what's going on here? And then eventually, Kelly Marie had to be like, my name is actually... Kelly Marie, you've been calling me. <laughs> but it's just, there's something so 
<laughs> like Kellyanne. actressy about that name, Kellyanne, Kellyanne Tran, Kellyanne Tran. But Kelly Marie, were, were you, where did, is that family? Why did you get called Kelly Marie? Yeah, so Marie is actually, I have two sisters and we all have a middle name Marie. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. Is it, what, is that in honor of like a, a family member or something? Um, my mom was really religious, so it's like oh. Mary. Oh, Mary. Yeah, right. yeah. And then all three of us have names that start with K. Uh, my mom and dad made this deal when they were like about to have children that if it was a girl, it would start with a K because my mom's name starts with a K. My dad's name starts with an L. So he always, we had no L's because there were no boys in our family. Oh, yeah. did, so did, they tell you what, did they tell you what you might have been if you were a boy? Were you going to be like a Lionel? Or a... Actually, I was going to be either Louis or Lewis, depending on how you pronounce that word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> depending if you're singing <laughs> To it. bring it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Kelly Marie was also a pop star. In, in the 80s in, really? in Britain. Oh, and cool. it was just Kelly Marie. So I was hoping that maybe you'd be named after her. <laughs> yeah. Would have what, been what, brilliant. Was she a one hit wonder? Yeah. Do you uh, remember the song? Oh, is there love, 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 Oh, that's a good song. That kind of yeah. trance song. Have you the, the, did the Did the communards cover it? Was it the communards? <laughs> Jimmy Somerville covered it. Was it, it was either the Communards or Bronsky B. It might have been Bronsky B. You're right, John. That wasn't Kelly Marie. Oh, uh, was it someone else? Come <laughs> on, Billy. Oh, Kelly Marie no. sang a song that uh, whatever the chorus was, everybody used to sing Gam and Roll instead of I'm in Love. This, Maybe it was that one. This podcast has got very surreal. I love it. Yeah. I love it. If John could bring that up just now, I would love him for it. I Kelly Marie... Love. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm, I'm in love, in Kelly love. Marie Kelly from Marie. the 1980s. <laughs> John will find it, but why don't, John, oh. uh, uh, Billy, why don't you ask this question from Rob Sutcliffe right, in, ready. in Manchester in England, where you I'm from. What? I might actually ask the one from Colin C in Orlando. Oh, but poor Rob now. But that's all right. We'll do both. Go on then. <laughs> so Colin C in Orlando, because I thought this might be good for uh, Kelly Marie, because um, she likes the Lord of the Rings films. From sixth grade. Oh, this would be a great one for <laughs> Now, Kelly, Kelly Marie. Marie, who would you cast if Elijah, Sean, Dom, and Billy were not cast as the four hobbits? Oh, that's tough one, I know. And you can cast it from anybody through wow. history, mm. actors or non actors. That's mm. messed up. Who would you cast? As the four hobbits. Well, first I'll say it was perfectly cast, and I wouldn't want to change mm, anything. I would. <laughs> well, we could leave it at that, Kelly. <laughs> Why? Thank you, thank you. And John, that's switched, a wrap. <laughs> I would have switched out Pippin. I think you, McGregor. <laughs> I think you, McGregor, would have been a great Pippin. He would. He'd have been a sexy Pippin. Oh, oh. I bet he'd get more close-ups. <laughs> he definitely <Right>? would. <laughs> Who um, would you cast? Who would you choose? Right here we go. It's tough, isn't it? No, it's, tough. it's easy. For. <laughs> Let's 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 pick one. Pick. Frodo Baggins, Jimmy Durante. Who's that? Who's that? Well, you've got to look him up. It's Samwise Gamgee. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine was actually up for Samwise Gamgee really? in Scotland. I wow. won't mention his name, but a wonderful actor, and I think it was down to the last two. But I won't mention him as being a. Was you know, the process but super it's what long? We're talking about yeah. yeah. Oh, it's brutal. Was brutal. the your process also like? It super wasn't. Long? What? It was super fast. Billy was the first person cast in the film. What do you, what do you mean? Well, we at we, mine was pretty long. I think they were having difficulty <laughs> with Mary. Well, of course, he's a very complicated character. Very good. And you thought, <laughs> who, <laughs> who has got that kind who, of depth? Yeah, he's that genius, say quiet. That, I mean. that <laughs> depth of character, but yet. The sexual tension. Yeah, yeah, that energy, <laughs> that kind of raw, physical, masculine sexuality. Where you could take this character well, right through to the end. I've ruined my script there. I got so <laughs> excited. When he stabs a guy in the knee when he should have got him in the river. He's too small, Billy. You should have went for the river. Yeah, you should have time. shouted, I am no man, and stabbed <laughs> him right through the eye. Yeah, that could, could have been have. your moment. Yeah, I could have stolen that from Miranda, actually. That would have been brilliant. But you, go on, yours was very fast. Your casting. How many auditions? So, uh, on tape mm -hmm. with the casting director, that tape was sent to New Zealand. To yep. Pete, and then, like with your Star Wars, I think they were looking all over the world. Mm -hmm. So then Pete went to Los Angeles, New York, Sydney, London. Wow. I met him in London with uh, Fran Walsh. We spent about an hour doing scenes. And then, basically, a week after that, I got a phone call mm. offering me the part. They're oh all sat God. around going... 
So to Pete and Frank, what about this guy? What about this guy? What about this guy? And Bill's going, uh, Pete's going, no, we need an idiot. We need an actual, like a legitimate <laughs> idiot. Someone whose brain has started to addle over the last few years. Can you think of anyone? And Pete's like, you know what? I've seen a tape. <laughs> Give me back those tapes. Where's that guy? I remember that idiot. I brought Whoa. Eddie on him. Yeah. <laughs> Dom, it was longer um, for you? Mine was longer, yeah. Mine was longer. Um, I had two auditions with the Hubbards, both on tape. And so then, you auditioned together? Like, no, 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 no. Oh. Separate. What? Yeah, of course. You didn't that, meet until you were Didn't both. meet until New Zealand, yeah. He was what? working, he was filming in France. He was doing a show in France. So I was playing a, a, a guy who gets his head all shaven off at the end of the show in France. So I went into audition for Lord of the Rings after being punched on the tube on the underground oh in God. London because someone must have thought I was a skinhead or maybe just wanted to punch me anyway. So I didn't have a black eye, but I had kind of a yellow eye. You know, when it goes kind of yeah, yellowy purple. Yeah, yeah. Skinhead. And I'm auditioning for a, a generic Hobbit role, which was when Gandalf knocks on the door and says to Frodo, you know, be careful with that ring type thing. Keep it yeah, secret, yeah, keep, yeah. It, keep it safe. Did that twice. And on the second time that oh. I did it, this is good. You're like, oh my you're God, like, I'm, so excited. Really I'm like so excited. This. On the second time that I did it, they were getting all the, the tape kind of ready. And John Hubbard, the guy who runs the Hubbard casting agency, said, could you just wait for 10, 15 minutes just to make sure that the tape is fine and we've recorded it and we need to rewind it and make sure it's all on tape? I said, yeah, fine. And he said, if you wait another five or 10 minutes, we're expecting David Bowie. <gasps> to audition shut and I was like up. what shut and he up, went shut yeah up, shut up, shut so up. I sat like you with the coffee table but I sat there with a huge coffee table but just like mm -hmm, yeah <laughs> page seven page seven. and every time the door opened I was like here he comes here comes the thin white duke and eventually <laughs> eventually he walked in and just kind of went hello and I went hello David Bowie and then he went in and I was like yes and then walked are up. you kidding me wait yeah. hold hold yeah. on that was he auditioned it. He auditioned, I think, for Elrond. I think, right? Yeah, I think the Hugo so, yeah. Weaving. I am oh. shaking. Yeah. I think for the Holy longest time, crap. people thought that he auditioned for Gandalf, but I don't think it was Gandalf. I think it was Elrond. Yeah, it'd be an elf, wouldn't it? I mean, it'd need <clears> to be, be an, an elf. elf. But he was wearing like a gun metal suit, kind of shiny looking suit, perfect hair, came in, obviously didn't know me from a hole in the wall, but just kind of said hello. And for me, for the next... 20 years of my life, that counted as meeting David Bowie. So I'd be like, I met David Bowie. People were like, mm, he walked through a room <laughs> that you were sat in. It doesn't really count. Wow. And then years later, Elijah and I went to a concert after Rings came out and I actually did meet him then. And I told him that did story. Did you tell him? Yeah, yeah. Did you remember? Yeah. Well, he didn't remember that thing, but he right. he obviously came, remembered going in and auditioning for him. Wow. Have you seen the new documentary about him? No, is it good? It's great. Brilliant. Wow, I'm sorry. My heart is really beating. Yeah, no, he's, a, he's an icon and all that kind of stuff. Um, we didn't really answer the question, did we? Who else would play? So you've got, who, who did you say? Um, Dean Martin's going to be... <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Durante. Jimmy Durante's going to be Sam. No idea who that is. That's brilliant. Frodo. Maybe put maybe a young Paul McCartney. Lovely. Lovely right? choice. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I mean, Ray, Pippin. Yeah, Pippin. You, you need, I, it you, has to be Leo. Yeah, Leo. I mean, who else? Yeah, it's a good show. <laughs> he's, got, he's got that kind of... Level of sophistication and then who's to his got work. this sexual you know, that energy from Mary? Is it <laughs> someone deeply sexual? Is it is it like a is it like a like a Richard Burton? Or it a, could be a Burton, like a, an Oliver Reed, maybe. Oh, well, Oliver Reed is too, that too far. much. Too you've, much. You've reached too, too far. Much. A deep sexual energy. A deep sexual energy. A short, short sexual energy. <laughs> sure. And also, <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it Peter Dinklage after a couple of glasses oh, of wine? Maybe. So maybe. Peter Dinklage. After like half a glass of wine. I think, wine. you know who I see it as? Olivier. Oh, Larry. Wow. Yeah, dear Larry. Mm, he'd be good, Larry. Yeah. Wow. I think that's great. I think Lawrence Olivier. Yeah, I think we've nailed it. Incredible. Hey, should we eat the world? Because we're running oh, out love of time. To yes. Billy and Dom eat the world. Billy, it's another segment of our favorite part of the show. Billy and Dom eat the world, oh. and Kelly Marie has brought what I would deem to be a classic chip from the United States. Kelly Marie, it's over to you. Yes. Um, I brought a variety of different mm. flaming Hot Cheetos snacks. Lovely. Oh, so Lovely. Flamin' Hot. 
Mm. Yes, which I grew up on. And actually, earlier when you said, <laughs> when you asked if my friends have any nicknames for me, my friend Jancy out there calls me sometimes Talk Talk, which stands for Thug of Cheetos. Oh, wow. Because I'm a very big Cheeto fan. So this was kind of your little happy treat when you were a kid? Yeah, it was. This yeah, is yeah. something that your parents were okay with you eating? Because probably not that good for you. It's Jesus. so not good for you. Yeah, my sisters and I would fight over who got to eat the crumbs in the bag. <gasps> the uh, dust, yeah, yeah. the lovely dust. Uh, is that not for you, Bills? No. no, all of a sudden that just, I felt like I'd ate it. <laughs> and I didn't like it. Oh, I like him. Sometimes my dog will do that. He'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll, go, he'll go after a bee or something. And then I can see in his eyes when he imagines what that bee would be like in his mouth. And he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I felt like with the, the, the You're sand. Not a, do you not like spicy? I don't I don't mind it, but I'm not going to throw the sand from it oh, into my mouth. I love Got the it. dust. The dust do, is so good. Do you like, do you eat tackies? You know that, those? Yeah, tackies, I, like, I do. I like to crunch them in the bottom and pour that in yeah, the mouth as well. Billy's quite opposed to that. Hey, well. hey, John. John, have you got any like little plates? Anything that we could put Cheetos on? I'm going to get you a plate right now. Thank you, John. You're the most wonderful man. Isn't he just a saint? Well, John, what a Cal- sweetheart. In fact, do you know what? What? Johnny Clues could play Samwise Gamgee. Yeah, he'd be a lovely oh, Samwise. Wow. Loyal to the end. And just a wonderful, wonderful man. Mm, and always walking around with pats and pans on his back as well. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Kelly Marie, do you want to choose which bag we start with? Are we going to have all of them? We're going to have all of them for okay, sure. Okay, then that's, I would start with the classic. Yeah, the classic. Yeah, let's go classic, classic, John. Thank you very much. Hot, crunchy we, we've got what, what's coined here an interesting story for an NPR about Cheetos. Should we, should we do it? Yeah. Right. I'll read the first half page, and then I'll leave it up to you guys to read the second page. Cool. So this is, uh, John organizes all this stuff, so this is interesting in John's mind. In John's mind. And then we can see if it is interesting or not. Mm. Here we go. In the late 1980s, Richard Montanez was a janitor at the Frito-Lay plant. Could you just pour a little few? Yeah, here it comes to At the Frito-Lay plant in Rancho Cucamonga. To earn some extra money, he would submit ideas to the factory, which was running a sort of contest for new chip flavors. Right. Frito-Lay has not verified this contest ever existed, by the way. Montanez never won, but when stocking chips in a store off the clock, he noticed that the Mexican spices shelf was next to the snacks shelf. Gave him an idea. Why don't we make chips spicy? So he took cues from the similarity in shape between an elote, I think that's right, and a Cheeto, filled a trash bag with cheeseless Cheetos off the production line, took them home, and ultimately invented Flaming Hot Cheetos. Then he called up Roger Enrico, the chief executive at Frito-Lay at the time, to pitch his idea. Enrico ate it figuratively. Oh, ate it up, figuratively, (laughs) maybe literally too, on the spot, and the rest is history. It's a great story. (gasps) It's well, a great story, How much of John. this is true, continues what? John. What? Enter the Los Angeles Times. Wait it, a minute. In a piece. Published. Shall we pass this on? The no, next no, part? we're going to go to the next page. Oh, is there many muchness? Oh, so there's a lot of muchness. Wait a minute, so you're saying it might not be true, Yes, story? well, let's see what the New York Times <gasps> says. Listen in. In, <laughs> in a piece published just days after the Planet Money episode aired, the Times claimed that Montanez did not, in fact, invent the snack and that the story is just an urban legend. According to interviews with more than a dozen former Frito-Lay's employees, the archival record and Frito-Lay itself. In a statement to the Times, Frito-Lay credits Lynn Greenfield, a young NBA and junior uh, employee who was tasked with creating the brand in the late 1980s, and Fred Lindsay, a company salesman on the south side of Chicago, for pushing the company into a flavor that category... Oh, oh, sorry. Into a flavor category after noticing spicy snacks from local competitors would just blow off the shelf. Now, I'll leave this next page to the two of you guys. Wow. Well, can I eat one? Please have one. one. So there was a great story it's that this guy yet. invented it because he wanted it to be like a Mexican snack. Is that right? And he mm-hmm. saw that it was next. And then the, the New York Latte. Times came out and said that's not true. That's not true, <gasps> but it continues. Hold on. Wow, these are so good. They're very good. These would be your favorite out of the three, or do you do you mess with the other ones as well? So I have not tried these Carolina Reaper ones. Can't I didn't wait. even know they existed, Can't so I'm wait. very excited about those. Can't wait. And then what's the other one that we've got? Hot mean, um, puffs, flaming hot puffs. puffs. Mean Dom ate a Carolina Reaper a couple of weeks ago. How are you doing? I'm still not. I'm still not <laughs> back to normal. Really? Yeah, uh, it's really hot. Ooh. I took some home and I've been meditating with them in the morning. So yeah. take a little slice. And for that 10 minutes that it's hurting, just close your eyes and try and get into it. It gets easier. 
Yeah. When you were, said you were meditating with them, I thought you all sat in a, a little circle. You could do that too. You and the chilies. Yeah. <laughs> this is tasty. Right, come on. Someone needs to do the first half and do the other half. Are you doing it, Kelly Mary? I'm right. eating, I'm eating snacks right. here. Here we go. <laughs> and Tanez himself only began taking credit for inventing Flamin' Hot Cheetos during paid speaking engagements in the 2000s. And his claims went viral when the media promoted his feel-good rags-to-riches tale. Mm -hmm. It all went unchecked by Frito-Lay for several years, as most of the executives involved in developing the Flamin' Hot brand had already retired. Until 2018. Oh. That's when Greenfield heard Montanez's story and contacted corporate. An internal investigation was launched that resulted in no evidence of Montanez's claims. I'm doing a terrible job pronouncing it. You're not it's wonderful. Wonderful. It's wonderful. Great story. Charmed by your voice. If that story existed, believe me, we would have heard about it. Ken Lukaska, who worked as a product manager for the core Cheetos brand when Flamin' Hots were rolling out nationally, told The Times, this guy should run for office if he's that good at fooling everyone. Oh, oh wow. what a quote to give the Times. Wow. <laughs> the Times further notes that Enrico, the CEO Montanez com- claims he pitched his creation to, didn't even take over the Frito-Lay brand until early 1991, which is several months after Flamin' Hot Cheetos were mm. already in test markets like Chicago, oh. Houston, and Detroit. Oh. But here the story takes a turn again Another turn. in the form of Al Carey, and I will pass it over to you, Bill. Bills, bring us home. Hold on. You don't I, even know where you are, do you? Well, I was listening. I wasn't. I wasn't reading. You're. You're in. <laughs> the... Stick your finger nearby. You're right here. Right about there. Okay. Yeah. I'm actually enjoying these. They're very. Thirsty. Yeah, they're Aren't lovely. They actually. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Mm. Carey was division president of Frito-Lay West in 1992 when he says he first met Montanez, who pitched him ideas targeted at the Latino market. Carey has consistently towed the line in claiming that Montanez invented Flamin' Hots and also that they existed before Montanez. Mm. So, he says, I'm sure if you went back into Frito-Lay history, okay, there's probably <laughs> something in 1990 that was a test marker on a spicy product. We probably he didn't said. need that, okay, did we? Yeah. Well, it's in there. I mean, it's in there, but we probably didn't According need it. According to the Times. Yeah. I'll be surprised if it was the same ingredient, but it could have been, mm. I guess, Tom. Mm. Montanez, in his part, has doubled down on his story. Wow. <laughs> While he did not participate in the LA Times investigation, he spoke with variety, mm. saying, all I can tell you is what I did. All I have is my history. What I did in my kitchen. What a lovely quote. That's Bring beautiful. us home, Tom. Really? Bring us home. In an opinion column published today in the Times, Gustavo Arellano, who wrote about Montaigne's story back in a 2012 book, offered his take on the situation. Gustavo said, I understand why people are rallying behind Montaigne's the truth hurts, for one, and their frustration over Sam Dean's article isn't so much about Montana's rather than a microcosm of two big issues that continue to plague Mexicans in the United States. Historical erasure and the continued yearning for heroes that white America can also embrace. Wow. Will we ever have the full story, uh, the full truth of the story? Probably not. But honestly, it's the myth we enjoy more anyway. Wow. So no one really knows who invented the flaming Hot Cheeto. If anyone ever asks me, Dom, <coughs> I will say it was Montanus. Mm. I like that story. Me too. That hey. He took his history like and his too. culture and he said, I'm going to make something and I like that. So I'm going with that story. I like that too. It's I the nicest like story. Too. Hey, should we open another bag? Yeah. Because I like the OGs. Right. I'm loving them. Now All right. we're going to eat puffs. Yes. So these... They're just puffier. This is how I feel about them. I'm excited for you to try them. Um... Different texture. Okay. Not as crunchy. Coffee. A lot more air. Yes. Mm. But also, because of the air, I think, the density of the... <laughs> well, I really love these. Um, the density of the product is, is, is different, and therefore, the spice is, like, at a higher rate. Oh, nice. So these feel more spicy than the crunchy oh, ones. And would you say better or not yes. as good as the original? Nice Kelly Marie I would say mm-hmm. that I enjoy the crunchy texture, 
But every once in a while, it's like a little change, you know? It's like, mm. well, I'll have some of those. Okay, mm. so you might choose this over the original sometimes, yeah, but not always. Mood. Yeah. Now, it, it, the look of it is like a, a darker mm. what's it, Tom. It's like a dark what's it, yeah. We have, mm. we have, do you know what's it's out of Britain? Yeah. Mm. William, will you be mother? I, lo- I love a what's it, Tom. I like a what's it. Yeah, that's good. Right. Oh, they're whoppers, actually. Yeah, they're uh-huh. absolute crackers. Kelly Marie, would you pair these with anything? Do, do you dip these in anything, or do they go with a, a soda or anything like that? So I don't dip these. Mm-hmm. I also think they're hard to do with soda just because of how spicy they are. It just sort of, I don't know, makes it taste weird, the soda, I guess. Um, do you like these? How do you feel about the texture? Different, right? You're right, they're spicier because they it, the, mm-hmm. the spice is all over the top of them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But well, I like the texture because it's more like a what's it. I like them. So I might like these better. Oh. Tell me, you've been eating these for, what, 20 years or so? Yeah. Um, Very long time. <laughs> I get the feeling, correct me if I'm wrong, but I get the feeling that they could create quite a funk in your mouth. In your mouth? Mm. <laughs> like if you, if, if, you, if you went about your day and didn't brush your teeth for the next four or five hours and then tried to... Stick oh yeah, for sure. They're throat. not good for you. I used to read articles about how people got sent to the hospital for eating too many. Like this is an actual thing. There was like wow. some. How many would you need? Eat? You'd lot. have to eat a lot. I mean, wow. I yeah, I have to give myself limits. I really, really like those so chips nice? takis. Takis are so good. Then yeah. I went online to read about if they're good and or bad for you, and they're not that good. And then I stopped eating them. Mm. But I really like them. I like these better. You like Do them you? better. Mm-hmm. I think I still prefer the OG ones, but these are tasty. Right, let's go crazy. Let's oh, go Carolina right. Reaper. Carolina. So these are the ones I will honestly say I've never tried. Didn't even know they existed. John must. John said, I don't know if he was kidding, but he said he went to 30 Ralphs. So wow. it's a lot of Ralphs. Yeah, that is a lot of Ralphs. Billy, are you going to get a flashback? Because the last time you had a Carolina Reaper, you got hot hiccups and they look very painful. I got hot hiccups and then after that, I got a cramp like you oh. wouldn't believe. A cramp? Yeah, in my stomach. Oh, no. The guy who made the Carolina Reaper said that you might get that and then... I I thought, uh, I don't think I will, but I did. <laughs> will you be mother? Um, Callie Marie, you've got siblings, right? I've got two sisters. More, more, more. Oh, God, oh, God that's a lot now. Yes. One older, one younger. Do, you, do your sisters enjoy these, or is oh, this yeah. just a thing no, for this you? Oh, yeah. This is like a big, every time, my sisters were actually here this weekend because I'm leaving for five months, and we just ate, you know what, I'll show you a picture. We have yeah, so good. many bags of chips, and all we did was watch Lord of the Rings and eat chips. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. What a fun weekend. Incredible, look. I would do that. Not that hot. No way. Oh, wow. Isn't that cute? Well, that's a lot, that that's is a, lot a of brilliant chips. picture. It's a lot of chips, right? Yeah. yeah. The picture is uh, Kelly Marie with her two sisters and honestly, 20 bags of chips. <laughs> Very <Brilliant. laughs> pains. Hey, nowhere near as hot as an actual Carolina no. Reaper. And a strange flavor. Ooh. The, it's like a barbecue or the. It's nothing. I don't like do. that at all. No. I yeah. don't know if you've ever had a Carolina Re- uh, Reaper, mm-hmm. but it doesn't taste like that. No. No. Really? It's a it's a strange taste the Carolina Reaper because obviously there's <clears throat> a flavor, but the overwhelming feeling of eating a Carolina Reaper is this body sensation. It's like the flavor and the taste goes out the window, doesn't it? It's like yeah. your whole body starts to have a reaction to it. Yeah. And that oh, is whoa. the that is the feeling of eating it. It's, it's you just start strange. sweating immediately or um I no, got the I really sweat. I got the hiccups really bad. I got hot teeth. My all my teeth were, felt like they were like roasting hot to touch, which they obviously weren't. Um, hot mouth, hot throat, everything kind of hot. And did uh, you have just a tiny bite of it? <coughs> yeah, <clears throat> just a bite. I, I bit down to the uh, seeds. No, I don't think you did have the seeds. I had the seeds. You know, that's no, the hottest part. No, yeah, you did. didn't yeah. do that. I don't think he did. Do he just <laughs> he just sits in a circle and meditates. He meditates with, with the seeds. Occasionally, we'll, they'll go to a, a yoga class together. <laughs> no, he, he, he claimed that he had the seeds, but when I looked I, at I the bite the that he took, there was no evidence that he took this. I don't think he did have the seeds. <laughs> um, hey, I don't like them. Yeah, these Reaper ones are too sweet. I don't. I don't Definitely like not. Um, as good as the other two. Well, should we give him some scores? Kelly, we like to give um, these things scores in three different categories. William, it's over to you. So, Kelly Marie. Oh. <laughs> is taste or mm-hmm. flavour? Mm-hmm. After that, we're going to do aesthetics. How does it look? Mm. And the third one is how useful are they? Mm. Oh, useful. Mm-hmm. Taste. Now, are we doing bills? Are we yeah. doing like an overall flaming hot cheetos I thing? Think so. I think we do. As so in general. I think kind of pick your favourite. You don't have to say which one it is, but you give the scores on that one. Lovely. Great. Taste. 
I think it's going to be high for Kelly Marie. I really. Oh, think. it's going to be high. I'm going to get some more of the OG ones. Right, ready? And it's out of ten. Um, it's out of uh, what is it? Out of ten. Ten. Yeah. Thank and, you. Um, That's oh, it's the originals. Cool. And oh, you can use oh. decimals if you feel like it's not a four or a five. It's a four point six. You're allowed to do that. Taste ten. Wow. Oh, wow, that's a bang on Taste ten. ten. Would you would you say it's your all time favorite snack? Absolutely. Wow. Really? Hands down. Wow. So you're a savory person, not a sweet person mm-hmm. necessarily. Oh, I don't eat dessert. I will after dinner. I'll save room for chips. Wow. You got to okay. get a little crunch in every meal, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> don't flavor for my favorite, which is the OG uh, uh, flaming hot Cheeto. Um, it's great. I like a hot chip. I'm giving it an eight. Nice. That's good. Yeah, I think the flavour is much better than I thought they were. I didn't think I liked them, but I do like them. So I'll give it a, I'll give it an eight as well, Dom. Lovely. Wow. How does it look to you? It looks crazy. Really? It, it yeah, looks, it okay, I, I will say, it's obviously very nostalgic for me because I grew up eating them. But if we're looking at these from a place of like, if I saw this just randomly in the world, I think I'd be like, that does not look like food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, does yeah. not look healthy. No, it doesn't look like food. It looks full of chemicals. Absolutely. And I would guess little kids probably get their mouths all stained with it and the oh, fingers yeah. and stuff like that and the tongue maybe. Mm-hmm. So I usually eat these with chopsticks. Oh. Do you your, really? To keep yourself Yeah, so you don't have the red fingers. How mm. fancy pants are you <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry, I didn't bring any chopsticks today. No, it's all right. I kind of like the look. It's in a, it's in a unique original look. Mm-hmm. Looks as if they're on fire, doesn't it? It's a, se- it's a seven red. to me. I'm giving it a, a, a seven. Um, um, did you give it a score? No. no. All right, not yet. I'll go then. Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to go the original. It's a funny shape, is it? What yeah, is it, it is. shape about? I like the color, though. It does look like it's on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to give the seven point five. Lovely. Wow. I mean, you might think that you could you could think that the factory making these these would be all the offshoots that didn't quite work yeah, out. Didn't yeah. quite they're like oh it's a weird shape but they've actually embraced the fact that the shape mm-hmm. is peculiar uh, you know what i actually now that i'm looking at the original i think the puffs are actually prettier to look at mm-hmm. yeah i think i'd give the puffs a nine. Oh, oh wow, wow. And high give, scores yeah i know and the original i'd probably give it an eight and okay. what do you think's most attractive the um puff one here or the original um what's it what's the English one called we were just talking about? What's it? A what's it? Oh. Because mm. I like the look of a what's it. They're thinner, aren't they? So no, they're s- basically the same but a more orange. Well they're more cheesy what's it's whereas these are more kind of hot. Yeah. yeah. I like a what's it better. Yeah? Now last one, Kelly Marie. How useful are they? How useful is it, Gallimary? Sell us on this. These are, what you've can got we do them. These are not useful at all. <laughs> they're in your, you, you're in, some friends have arrived at your apartment. Yeah. Your friends are outside there. Yeah. Just Unannounced. Oh, we're hungry, they say, but not just for chips. And you, <laughs> and you go into your cupboard and there's not much there and you go in your fridge. You've got a packet of them. You've got some self-raising flour, a couple of eggs, a half pint of milk, um, it's always the same with you. No, hold on. It's always eggs and flour. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, j- j- bits of chocolate just left over mm. from like a bar. Mm. And is it useful? Is there something you can do with it? Yeah. I mean, I, I would definitely feed them to my friends. Just as they are. Just as they are. Yeah, can we do anything else with you? I mean, you can't really you make can't cake really, out of it. Can you can't you? really do anything. You well, crush you know what? Them down okay. And put so it in people, soup. So people. Right. There's now. Um, Hot Cheeto mac and cheese, which is actually mm. very good. You can have, make a mac and cheese and crush like crunchy crush hot Cheetos in. on top. Oh, that's yeah, that's good. nice. I and mean, then people are like, Kelly Marie, you are a magician in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Could you use that flavoring and throw it around into popcorn? And now you've got Flaming oh, yeah. Hot Cheetos popcorn. Yeah, actually, they do make Flaming Hot Cheetos popcorn. It's very good. Uh-huh. So there's a few things I feel like you can scatter it on top of things. Like, oh, like that. Like, would you put it like uh, maybe on a... a a chicken. On a chicken. A I chicken mean, breast, for instance. That's a big swing. That's <laughs> a big. <laughs> if it's going in the oven anyway, you know you've what got I've some seen? mozzarella on there. Flaming I have cheese. seen Flamin' Hot Cheeto like chicken, um, like chicken fingers, like fried chicken fingers. And okay. they put. See? I haven't tried those yet, so mm. I can't say. So mm. I think they're maybe more useful than you would think. 
It's portable. I always think, can you take it to a football match and give it out to the players at halftime? You absolutely can. You can be like, hey, guys, you feel a little depleted? Have a few handfuls <laughs> of Flaming Hot Cheetos. Um, kids love them, right? Kids love them. Kids love them. Car trips, road driving. Yeah, yeah I think uh, we're pushing up there. Yeah, I'm seeing the quite useful. Can I give it a score? Please, yeah. William. I'd love that. I'm going to give it a 9.2 for useful. Wow. Money. I think they're useful. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's one of them things that if you had it in your cupboard at home and someone arrived unannounced, you'd be like, I don't really have anything, but I do have some flaming hot Cheetos for you. So I'm going to say the same. I'm going to give it a 9.2. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Wow. I, I really undersold the usefulness. Um, I love these. Yeah, you do. I'm going to give it a 10. What the heck? What useful. the heck? So the scores from Kelly Marie there was a 9, 9, 10. That's 10, brilliant. 9, 10. Or was it 10, oh, 9, the flavor 10. was 10. Wow. Amazing. As we have mentioned today on the Friendship Onion, uh, Kelly Marie here, whose name uh, came from, well, just listen back and you'll know. But I thought maybe she was named after the 80s pop sensation, Kelly Marie, mm. uh, whose song we have now on Is It Funky For You? Let's have a listen to Kelly Marie. There we Ooh. go. Just take you back to your nightclub in days. <laughs> yeah. I could just see you on the dance floor in a disco in the 80s, Bills. Yeah. (laughs) What is this move? That's my my jiggle. Yeah, Yeah, I love it. Kelly Marie feels like I'm in love. Now, come on. We scored this in quite a difficult way, Kelly Marie. You might not like this. We scored this in how funky is it for you? On a score range of not very funky. Brahms. To <laughs> as funky as you can get. Prince. So oh, you can score it. Anything in between. Hard. Like, say, for instance, I would score that as Earth, Winds and Fire. Oh, I was very close wow. to what I was going to say. I was going to say Boney M. A Boney M level of funk. Boney M, another good. What's Boney M? Boney, Boney M, M did, what's the most famous track um, on you? Down by girl. the riverside, oh, brown girl in the ring. Tra la 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 la, there's a brown girl in the ring. Tra <laughs> la 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 la. Yeah, I can't. Do you remember that? Yeah, that song. No. Um, and um, <laughs> <laughs> something else that they did. They anyway. did a lot of stuff, Boney M. They were yeah. very good. Yeah, very kind of big. slightly 70s cosmic funk. Hang on, here's John. Very interesting fact. Uh, Ooh, this yeah. was written for Elvis Presley originally. What? When, really? When, the un- pelvis? Yes, but unfortunately when he died, they uh, you know, obviously couldn't have him record it. Yeah, it'd be so, difficult. It'd be more difficult. Yeah. yeah. So it says the producer, Barry Murray, was about to send to Elvis when he got a phone call saying Elvis had died. It's After that, building. he kind of put it to bed for a while. Kelly Marie had a few minor hits in France, was hanging around the office, thought she had a good voice, and he said- Wow. Well, she was just hanging around the office? It's like one of your stories, that hanging around the office and suddenly you're in Star Wars. Went in at lunchtime, they said, Could you sing this? Mm. She said, Yeah, put in a boop boo boo boo. And we're good to go. Hey, I tell you what, Elvis wouldn't have had the boop boo. He no. wouldn't have been into that. He wouldn't have. My hands are shaking, baby. My hands are shaking, baby. And they go, What is that? No, 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 no. Don't give me any of that bullshit. Cut out, cut out the uh, boop boo. Well, I'm lying in the boop boo. All right. So you've got, you got to give us a score from Brahms, no funk, from to Brahms Purple Prince, to Prince, super Prince funky. Man, what's in between? I okay, mean, I have a confession for you. Mm. I don't really listen to any cool music. It doesn't oh, really? matter. Well, what, are you a podcast person? What about person? that guy that he says he met and he didn't really met? He just he just walked through a room? Yeah, that was the, the sad. Thin I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm just could, yeah, could Bowie. You, yeah. I mean, Bowie's he's pretty funky. I've always thought it was David Bowie. <clears throat> could be Bowie or Bowie, I think. I well, think. I, I had this argument with my son. <laughs> And he said Bowie. I said Bowie. He looked it up and Bowie said it's Bowie. So it's definitely Bowie. Because yeah. if Bowie. Bowie says it's Bowie, it's definitely it's, Bowie. I Bowie. asked his son, I did a film with his son, Duncan Jones, and I said to him at dinner, I said, is it Bowie like Snowy or is it Bowie like Bowie? 
<laughs> and what did he say? He said it's Bowie like Snowy. And did you Snowy. say, is it Jones like Bones? <laughs> <laughs> or is it Jonas? Um, yeah, it's a great film, that Moon Age Daydream thing. Uh, mm. It's worth watching. It's kind of, it's an interesting film because it's, it's obviously a, 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 you know, a biopic. You're exploring someone's life, but it doesn't do it. I was saying to Bill, it doesn't do it in the same way that we've come to kind of expect, which is like, they were born here. This yeah. is what their parents did. This is how they got into music. It doesn't do that at all with this. It's just like, here is, are some examples as to why this artist was so incredible. So wow. it's, it's much more like an art piece, like a like slightly experimental cinema. I loved it. That reminds me of one thing I forgot to ask you. You've had tons of work and done lots of great stuff and your voiceover stuff and, and you're off to New Zealand to do your new thing. But I read somewhere about something, is it a documentary about um, <gasps> Domino yeah. tipping? What is that? Oh, Domino rallying. Oh my God. Um, it's this documentary called Lily Topples the World and it's, have you seen Lily's YouTube videos? No. no. Who's Lily? Um, the most incredible, her entire existence is just loving dominoes. And she has created an empire where she like builds these insane domino structures, so like tens people. of thousands of dominoes. Right. And like videotapes them. And she has like. Has she got a massive did, house? She's like bi billions. Where is she doing people. it? Because you need a ton of space, don't you? Yeah. So she. I mean, she she gets hired to do a bunch of them now. But does like she knock them places. down? Is it one of those yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. So you can watch so on at YouTube. the end. It, mm -hmm. Like she always knocks them down. Mm -hmm. And did you narrate it? No, 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 no. I just executive produced it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a producer. Oh, very cool. Yeah, when yeah, does yeah, that yeah. come out? Or is it's it out. It's oh, out. What's it called? Yeah, it's called Lily Topples the World. Oh, brilliant. Oh, well, what's that? We call, that. In Britain, we call that domino rallying, don't we? But do you I guys not call it domino called? rallying? I didn't know we oh. called it that. Domino rallying. Didn't know it had a name. I didn't know that either. So we definitely need to see that. That's brilliant. Yeah, and then you're off to cool. New Zealand. What are you going to watch on the flight? Lord of the Rings? Maybe, yeah. Have you got a favourite hobby? Do you think that's offered in the really? place? Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe Sam wants to Just ask Sam. Well, she's not, she's not Sam. <laughs> yeah, Sam. Uh, well, Kelly Marie, it's been great to have you. Um, have an amazing time in New Zealand. Thank Please get in you. touch if there's something, you know, if you're in a certain city and you're like, hey, any ideas? Like, we're not we're not as good as we used to be, but we're still kind of okay. I think we're New still Zealand all right. Yeah. 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 That would be good names of a couple of restaurants and some people, some friends. Yeah. Oh man, that's so great! Wow. I'm so excited. For Have you. an amazing time. Thank you, thank you, friends. Bills, we've run out of time. Hey, everyone, uh, get in touch with us if you want. Uh, what you don't put that powder in the your flaming eyes? Hot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Geo stuff Careful in my eyes. There. Um, how can they get in touch with us? Well, you can rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to your podcast, and then it's uh, the Friendship Onion on, on our YouTube channel. Yep, if you want merchandise, it's the Friendship Onion Podcast.com. If we've got in here, we'll give it to you <gasps> yeah, so that you can you can wear it proudly in New Zealand. Yes. Yeah. And um, if you want to send a voice message, it's uh, speakpipe.com forward slash the Friendship Onion. Thanks again, Kelly Marie. Thank it's been you. wonderful having you. Marie, and we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Toodles. <laughs>